Hello, I'm Omesh Vazirani at UC Berkeley, and I'm delighted to welcome you to this course on quantum mechanics and quantum computation. I'm sure many of you know that uh, quantum computation starts with this remarkable discovery that quantum systems are exponentially powerful. So a major goal of quantum computation is to harness this exponential power to solve interesting computational problems. So in this uh, overview, I want to tell you about what you can expect to learn from this course and how this course is organized. OK, so let's start with um, trying to understand more precisely what it means when we say that quantum systems are exponentially powerful. Imagine that we have a small quantum system of a few hundred particles, like a few hundred electrons or, or uh, photons or something. So let's say, for definiteness, we had, we had a system of 500 particles. Now, if we could harness all the computational power inherent in the system that quantum mechanics promises us, then in each cycle of the resulting quantum computer, we would be able to carry out exponential in 500, say 2 to the 500 steps. Now, how big is 2 to the 500? It, you know, it sounds like a large number. But you know, the interesting thing is 2 to the 500 is an impossibly large number. So 2 to the 500 is much larger than estimates for the total number of particles in the universe. It's also much larger than estimates for the age of the universe in femtoseconds. In fact, it's much larger than the product of these two quantities. So what this means is that if we could harness this computational power, then there's no way that in the classical universe we could match it, even if we, could, if we were able to use the entire resources of the universe in that computation. But now, of course, the difficulty lies in harnessing this power. And there are several challenges, and these are the challenges we'll speak about in this course. So first, we have to pick the right computational problems. So not every computational problem can be sped up by quantum computation. Probably the most famous example of, of a computational problem that can be sped up is what's called the factoring problem, where you're given a number n, and you want to write it as a product of, you know, factorize it into its prime power factors. OK, now, even if you have the right computational problem, designing a quantum algorithm is a very tricky task. And actually, for those of you who are already familiar with the design of classical algorithms, quantum algorithms look very, very different. And they have very different design principles. So we'll talk about things like um, the quantum Fourier transform, and a completely new style of designing algorithms. We'll also speak about, of course, what are the limits of quantum computers? What are those problems that cannot be solved, or we believe cannot be solved quickly by even if we had quantum computers? And then there's, of course, the challenge of building a quantum computer. OK, so this is something that um, hundreds of scientists are working on around the world today. It's a very difficult challenge. And um, in this course, I'll just touch upon briefly you know, the, the kinds of uh, systems and you know, the principles that, that uh, go into designing such, such quantum computers. So that's, you know, that's what we'll cover in quantum computing. But of course, in order to study this, you'll have to learn the basics of quantum mechanics. And this brings me to the other part of the of the course, which is um, uh, an introduction to quantum mechanics. Now, the way we'll study quantum mechanics in this course is in terms of a very simple building block, which comes from quantum computation, which is that of a qubit. So just as a bit is a simplest, it's the simplest um, representation of information in the classical world, a qubit is the simplest quantum system that we can think of. And describing quantum mechanics, the basic principles of quantum mechanics in terms of qubits, greatly simplifies the presentation. OK, so what this will mean is that within three to four weeks, you'll be in a, we'll be in the position where we can start covering 
you know, start um, uh, studying quantum computation, the basic notions of quantum computation, as well as uh, quantum algorithms, designing quantum algorithms. Okay, now there's another advantage to covering, uh, you know, to studying quantum mechanics this way, which is that um, we'll be able to jump right into some of the most counterintuitive aspects of, of quantum mechanics. So in particular, we'll right away, you know, within this, probably the second week of, of the course, uh, start talking about entanglement, which is one of the most mysterious aspects of quantum systems. Okay, and once we are into entanglement, we'll, we'll actually talk about, uh, you know, various uh, manifestations of it. We'll talk about uh, Bell inequalities, and we'll talk about um, things like quantum teleportation. And so, very quickly, you know, very soon in this course, you'll start grappling with the with the counterintuitive aspects of quantum mechanics. This is quite important because, of course, quantum computation exploits the most counterintuitive aspects of, of, uh, of quantum mechanics. Now, there's a sense in which this way of learning quantum mechanics might actually be a, a good thing, independent of uh, whether you're interested in quantum computation or not. So. Here's a quote from Niels Bohr, who is, you know, the famous physicist who discovered the structure of the atom. He talks about how quantum mechanics is a very counterintuitive theory, and anyone who is not shocked by quantum mechanics has not understood it. Another way of understanding this quote is that if you really want to deeply understand quantum mechanics, then you have to grapple with the quantum counterintuitive aspects of the theory. And so, for those of you who haven't really studied quantum mechanics before, this way of approaching it, you know, this emphasis on the on simple systems which illustrate the most counterintuitive aspects of the theory, this might be the right way to, you know, the, the, the right way to start studying the subject. And then later, if you're interested, you can go on to take a standard course in quantum mechanics to learn, you know, the physics of the hydrogen atom, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for those of you who have already studied quantum mechanics, this treatment might deepen your, your appreciation of, of quantum mechanics. Okay, so this finally brings me to the required background for this course and the teaching philosophy of the course. So in terms of required background, we've really tried to design this course to make it as broadly ac accessible as possible. So to people from computer science, physics, math backgrounds, and so the prerequisites are, have been pared down to the minimal possible prerequisites. So basically, there are two prerequisites. The main one is that you must have a solid background in basic linear algebra. And the second requirement is a pretty simple one. You should, you should be able to analyze the running time of, you must have seen how to analyze the running time of a simple algorithm. You know, any simple algorithm like, uh, like sorting or um, multiplying integers, how do you count the number of steps of the algorithm as a function of n, the, the size of the input? So something very basic. Okay, let me also say a few words about the philosophy of the course or how it's going to be taught. So there's one interesting aspect of it, which is what I call a Kanban approach to mathematical notation or math concepts. So this is um, an approach to manufacturing that, uh, you know, that the Japanese, Japanese have, a Kanban means just in time. It's a just in time approach. So in the 80s, they came up with this approach where instead of creating large inventories of raw materials and parts, what they would do is make the inventories as small as possible and have these parts supplied just in time. This made things much more efficient. Okay, so what I'm after here is, is that, you know, you're going to be seeing a lot of interesting new concepts. And many of these concepts are going to be paradoxical. And understanding them, you know, wrapping your mind around these concepts and being able to intuitively understand them is going to be quite challenging. And so, I would, what I want to do is I don't want to overload you with mathematical notation. 
at the same time that you're grappling with these concepts. You know, what the course will do is it'll adopt Kanban approach to mathematical concepts and notation. And so to the extent possible, when a new concept is introduced, I'll introduce it as naively as possible so that you're confronted with it and you can build an intuition for it. And then, of course, things will be made precise. I'll push that off as late as possible, but in a way that it's still understandable and everything can be made precise. Okay, so finally, let me just say that probably the most important thing that you can bring to this course, make sure you, you bring your imagination and your you know, an ability to think, grapple with these, these concepts, some of which are going to be quite mind-bending. So it should be an exciting eight weeks, and I hope you, I hope you enjoy it.